Do you remember how I said I was going to create a comprehensive list of videos detailing how I built this room? I lied. I'm really sorry. I decided, you know what? I'm going to get this water change system set up and then I'll take the video. A lot of nights I'm not starting this work until 10 p.m. at night. And if I was going to videotape everything, it would take twice as long. I can't wait to show you inside of this room what's going on. It's a work in progress. It's messy. But I am honestly really proud of it. Also, stick around to the end of the video and I'm going to be giving away Kelly Tawa eggs to six lucky people anywhere in the world. As long as it's legal, I don't want to get arrested. And without further ado, I want to get you in here and show you what I got going on so far. So for anyone that hasn't seen my previous video, this room is 26 feet long by 12 feet wide, giving an approximate square footage of a little over 300 square feet. Um, it is in a basement that was not finished. This room is finished now. Some of these walls are concrete, some of these walls are drywall. We did what we could to insulate the living daylights out of this room, and I'm glad we did. I'm going to take you for a walk around and show you what tanks are established already, what tanks are set up, and uh, some exciting new fish that are going to be hitting the website the second this video posts. So if you're in the market of some high-quality rare rainbow fish with good genetics, um, stay tuned because we got some really cool rainbow fish coming to the website. This is the door you walk in, and if you looked to the left of that door, you'd see that I've already got a TV hung. But honestly, when you're picking mops full of eggs, it's kind of a monotonous, boring task. I really like watching some fish videos on YouTube on here. Uh, I might also watch Moana with Sydney once in a while. Fish room fridge. All I really have in here is brine shrimp. More frozen stuff. Bunch of frozen foods. We've just got like a cheap little temperature gauge. This room stays right at around 80 degrees. We've had some really nice weather lately. I have this heater off actually. Uh, I have not had to run this in like four days. My dehumidifier is keeping this whole room at 80 degrees along with the just how well insulated this room is. I initially heated the room up with this. I turned it off and it seems to be holding that temperature. So really impressed with that. Hatching out some rice fish in this animal cracker bin. Just your standard slop sink. I'm not going to keep my brine shrimp in this location for too long. I'm probably going to hang them up um, on the wall right here. I just haven't done it yet. I hatch out an absolute ton of brine shrimp every day. Every tank in this house gets brine shrimp twice a day. And I really think that's important for the coloration and the health of the fish here. It also really helps me grow out a lot of fry. 100 gallon stock pond, some plants, fan, some more plants, cool little fishy thing. Those are 40 gallon breeders three high had a uh, custom made rack this next rack is going to have 12 10 gallon tanks on it obviously it's empty right now there's a lot of work that goes into it before you can actually put the tank on there this next rack has nine 10 gallon tanks on there past that is going to be nine more 40 gallons three high so just picture this rack three three in a row is what's gonna be from here all the way to that water storage tote. This vertical wallet water container holds 225 gallons. That's in the corner there. I think that's where it's gonna stay. Some really shoddy plumbing, don't look too close. Right here is gonna be my metal rack for 20 gallons. Got my linear piston pump up there. Then over here is another custom rack holding 15 uh, 20 gallon highs. I think I would have taken the time to move this out of the way. Sorry. <clears throat> so this is holding 15 20 gallon highs. And then to the right of that is going to be two high 75 gallon grow outs. Excuse all the junk. And then there's going to be two more 75 gallon grow outs right here. Last but not least, I kind of forgot to mention this, but Dean's fry system will be in this corner tucked away underneath the uh, TV. And I'm actually gonna go too high with it. I'm gonna do two 20 gallon longs right there. Eventually, what you might see in this room 
is a third row of tanks in the middle here. I tried to save as much space as I possibly could so I could make that happen. There's an air loop that goes around the whole room. That's an air loop that we can tap into wherever you need air for any filters. Well, I guess there's a T at this linear piston pump. I think right now that this linear piston pump is rated for 60 tanks. Definitely gonna have to upgrade that in the long run. Behind this fridge is my osmosis unit. It's mounted to the wall. It's got a water saver kit on it. I'm using 100% reverse osmosis water in this fish room. I remineralize it to a hardness of about three and a K KH of about three. TDS is about 120 on that. So if you follow that, there's a blue line that goes all the way from there, goes behind these tanks up into this vertical water storage container. I got this from a um, auto shop. It used to hold automotive uh, soap, which when I first saw that, I was like, yeah, I can't use that for the fish room. There was soap in there, but I washed, I washed it really well. I flooded and drained it about six times. I used um, bleach, baking soda, uh, Dawn dish soap, and then I have a big bag of carbon at the bottom just soaking up any extra chemicals that might still be in there. Uh, I've been using it for over a month now with no issues. I did have a leak on the bottom of it because um, I bought it used. And I just epoxied that leak and it's been holding. So, you know, fingers crossed. It was all this color. Jordan went ahead and painted it and just taped this off so that we can get a good gauge of the um, water volume so see it says 200 every line is 10 gallons gives me a good idea of how much water i got to work with so you can see right now i got was it 150 60 70 i have about 180 gallons of water on hand right now but under here is where all the water in this room empties out through the wall so there's a there's like a a t right there water all just goes right through the wall and out onto the ground outside this is a booster pump I have running for my osmosis unit. I keep the PSI at around 90. Keeps that, uh, those membranes working really efficiently. This line uh, right here is just a siphon that goes straight outside. So if I ever want to start a siphon, it'll just go right outside through a vent pipe over uh, on the wall there. Uh, before I go any further, I should let you know, this whole room is lined with um, drain pipes. So you can put a wall, you can put a uh, tank anywhere on the wall and drill a hole through this drain pipe and it will drain out the house, which is really, really convenient. So let me try to get a good picture of that. Each tank is plumbed and drains right into that, that um, PVC pipe that is a two inch pipe and it's pitched, I think about an inch per foot. Something like that. I think something like that. I can't remember, but basically it, it drops considerably from up here down to there. So basically this is a short run that just goes down that wall, down that wall, and it drains out the house. This one starts really up really high and it goes all the way there. See how you can kind of see that pitch right here. It goes all the way there, goes all the way there around that pond and down into there. Snuck next to this is a dehumidifier. Uh, really, really happy with this one so far. It's uh, just very simple to use. I do have it um, plumbed with an old garden hose, so that just drains right out the house too. Um, that way I don't have to uh -huh, empty this bucket every day because I, I don't even think it would take a day. It would probably fill up rather quickly. I keep it at about 50%, maybe 45%. It's adjustable. It takes an hour rest period per day just for the machine. Um, so that, that's really nice, and it makes it a lot more comfortable in here. And next we have a uh, direct vent natural gas heater. So there's no moving parts on this, there's no electric needed, it's just natural gas and a pilot light with a temperature probe on the bottom and an adjustable dial on the top. So I was running that for a while, I got this room nice and toasty, and I turned it off. So it's not, it hasn't run in like the last four days, but that'll be, this is gonna save me so much uh, money when it comes to electricity. Yes, I know natural gas isn't free, but I do believe once you get to a certain point, you know, tanks, like let, you know, I'm gonna have, I think 70 tanks in this room. It makes more sense just to heat the room and not every single tank individually. Not to mention, 
I've had a lot of heaters lately um, go bad on me and kill the fish. And I'm, I'm sick of it, so I'm not using heaters anymore. This is just my 100 gallon guppy pond. I can turn the air pump off for a second, just so we can kind of take a gander. Basically, all my coals of guppies, I shouldn't say coals, all my, you know, the guppies that aren't good enough to sell, I throw them in here. They're just mutts. It's a fun little pond. Also, any fish that got mature enough to kind of slip through the cracks, but isn't, you know, not nice enough to sell, like that one rainbow fish in the middle of the screen has one eye. I can't sell it, but there's nothing wrong with the fish. It's still healthy. This angel fish has, um, I think, kind of wonky ventral fins. Same thing, like it got pretty big, and I just, to be honest with you guys, I don't have the heart to kill fish when they get to a certain size. Uh, when they're small, I, I definitely take them out early. But uh, when they're big like that, I like to leave them alone. You can see there's a Bosmani in there too. So these fish are healthy. They're just not sellable. So I just keep them in here. Got some white clouds in here too. Some plecos in here. Some shrimp. Ram's horn snails. Some floating plants. Really excited about this. I'm going to be putting a waterfall right here. There'll be a dedicated video for that. And I'm going to be planting some uh, terrestrial plants. Kind of dipping my uh, toes into that world. So right here I got like a peace lily. It's supposed to be pretty easy for aquariums. Obviously got pathos all over the fish room already. Anthurium, something like that. I, I'm not a plant guy, guys, so. Anthurium. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Some kind of uh, Monstera might be the smaller variety. This is my regular Monstera Delicioso. I've wanted this for a long time. Really excited about this. And honestly, I love the pot just as much as I love the plant. Jordan and Sydney made this pot for me special. So it's uh, hand painted. It uh, means a lot to me, I really like it. I just took some dirt out of my, my uh, backyard and I've been feeding it with fish water and it's doing really well. So got some other various plants in here that uh, Jordan bought for her office at school but that I'm probably gonna just steal. Some succulents, stuff like that. This is my wedding plant. I'm trying to keep it alive. It's it's almost dead. So hopefully it'll, it'll bounce back. The next thing you're gonna notice is three 40 gallon uh, breeders. And I love all three of these tanks. They're all really cool. This might be a little premature, but I think I may have stumbled upon one of the best budget planted aquarium lights. These tube LED lights from Barina are like $8 a piece. They're really, really cheap, really efficient. They illuminate the fish really well. And they're $8 a piece. And you can link up to six of them. So I love these lights. These lights are awesome. But I feel like I found an even better light for planted aquariums. Check out this Mamba Jamba also made by Barina. I'll put all the links in the description. This is a grow light. It's a T8 LED, much more powerful. What I love about this, it's got um, included, included shades in here. So you, you're not getting blinded. If I mount this, there's gonna be so much glare. And for someone that takes a lot of videos, that's gonna be really annoying. These come included with a shade on both sides so you can hang it up and not get blinded. And it's bright AF, as the kids say. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So down here, I already have one mounted. I'm gonna be moving it probably. I'm just kind of farting around with different ways to mount this thing. If there's the light up there, you can still mount six of these in a row. And it's super duper bright. One of the problems with these 40 gallon uh, breeder racks, and I'm sorry, we're probably getting a little off topic. There's on the, on the lid, there's like these thick black pieces of plastic in the middle that kind of um, get in the way of the, the light. But I found that if you hold this a little behind it, so like directly above, like right here, it spreads out enough that it kind of illuminates the whole tank. And um, I'm really, really happy with the colors I'm seeing in the fish and I think the plants are gonna do really well too. So let me turn some lights off so we can get better uh, video of this tank. 
Oh, guys, I forgot to mention that these really awesome lights are 12 bucks a piece. I don't know about you, but that seems pretty cheap for uh, LED lights that make the tank look like this. So this 40 gallon is home to my favorite rainbow fish, Melitania species, Kelly Moisey. Uh, it was a birthday present from my good friend Steve, and I absolutely adore these fish. They really seem to turn on uh, first thing in the morning, and then sometimes they'll come down here at like nine at night, and they're looking really awesome. So just depends. They're not looking that great right now. Uh, a lot of people asking about them. They will be available for sale soon. I also have some raccoon tetras. These guys are amazing. I am breeding them right now. I want to sell them. They're, uh, I believe, from the Amazon River Basin, from a very specific spot in the river basin. And they're kind of hard to source. So I want to be able to provide these and kind of spread them out throughout the hobby and maybe even make a breeding video on them at some point. And you see the males are kind of having a bit of a sparring match right now. I have actually a lot of males in this tank. There's not a whole lot of females in this tank. There's one chunky female right there who looks like she's full of eggs. But these guys are just absolutely beautiful. They do seem a little aggressive, but I haven't seen any physical damage. It seems like they're just more um, aggressively just dancing with each other. This tank is also home to my L181 Peppermint Bristlenose breeding colony. They've been very, very prolific for me over the last few months. I actually just got another batch of about 50 of them growing up right now. One of these males in here is just a great dad. He just, every batch of eggs he's ever had, he's, you know, done a great job with them. It's tempting to move them around and split them up, but if they keep producing for me, I might just leave them here. They get a really high quality diet um, and do a lot of rapashi actually. And I'm gonna start doing a lot more vegetables too. We get water changes pretty much every day and they just seem really happy in this tank. I think they like having some fish above them, kind of acting as like dither fish. So you can see, the for this cheap $12 light, I think it's gonna do a great job of growing plants and really showing off the fish. Really, really super happy with how the moss is growing on this wood here. I mean, that looks so sick. And yeah, I mean, I got some guppy grass just kind of growing in clumps throughout this tank. Just a joy of a tank to look at. I find that when I do have a spare moment, I'm always in front of this tank, just chilling, just sitting on the ground watching it. You know, a lot of times you think that those tanks on the ground, you're not really gonna look at, but I get down here and look at it quite a bit. Oh, finally, before we get any further. So, you remember how I said each tank is plumbed? That is my overflow system. That overflow is specifically for aquariums. I'm gonna tell you right now, the flow rate on them is not that great. So if you need good flow rate, look for different ones, but they look really nice. So each tank in this room is gonna be drilled with a bulkhead, one inch bulkhead. I spent a little extra money and got black furniture grade PVC uh, for the 90s, just because I've taken the time to pave each aquarium's back and bottom black and I didn't want to look at a white uh, PVC pipe. And I also didn't want to spray paint it and put it in a tank. So that's a black PVC 90 with that overflow on it. And they've got overflows on it because this is all in a water, an automatic water change system. I haven't painted these pipes black yet. But this is a one inch pipe carrying fresh water from my water system. And there's special valves on here that are all plastic. I get them from gemco.com. It's, a, it's an online store specializing in building fish rooms. The website looks like it's from the 90s, but it's a really, really good place for all your fish room needs. And basically the way you order is you either send them an email or you call them. I like to call them. Got some really, really good professional uh, help from them and they, they are just phenomenal. So if you're looking for anything for your fish room, check out gemco.com, they are, they are great. I push a button that turns on a pump it shoots fresh water throughout this system. That fresh water goes into the top of these tanks. Once it overflows, the water goes out that overflow and out the side of the house. So that just really eliminates manual water changes now. So, so I'm not being so wasteful 
I better fix this. And so I'm not being wasteful. What I've been doing when I have the time, I'll siphon all the poop off the bottom first. Then I'll run the water change system to replace that water I've siphoned. It's a little less wasteful, really. Not wasting as much water because... You know what they say, like, the solution to pollution is dilution, right? So I'm diluting this dirty water with clean water. This is a, uh, just a tank I'm selling out of right now. It's not really made to look aesthetically pleasing. I also have a little bit of diatom algae in here. i probably throw a pleco in here and it'll clean it up in like three days. But these are my Melitania Bosmani Rosario liqueur. And Rosario was an absolute legend. He line bred these rainbows to get the deepest coloration he could possibly achieve with them. He recently passed away, and um, the more I learn about him, the more I, I love and respect him. And I'm actually reading his book right now, An Aquarius Journey. It's phenomenal. I'm about halfway through, and I'm really enjoying it. It's my intention to keep these fish my whole life, as long as I possibly can. And anyone that's um, interested in breeding these fish, when you order them from me, let me know. Uh, I'll send you a good ratio for breeding. So you can see, I've, I've also got some Trifasciata, Blythe River collection point in here. And these are all really little fish, but they've already got such great color. Lit on top of this tank. It's got some more terrestrial plants. These will be going on the waterfall I'll be building. The fluffy ruffle fern. I love that name. And then this other one is a ruby red, red Fetonia. Also a really cool plant. I think that looked really cool on a, a waterfall. This last tank is another 40 gallon filled with two different kinds of garamis. I've bred both of these. They can be a little aggressive when they're breeding, but when they're not breeding, they're fine. Pearl garamis are my favorite garami that I've kept so far. Um, I've got a bunch of them. They're all 50% off right now, so if you're curious, you can find them at sydneysangels.com. This rack I just built, I built it to match this rack. It's basically just going to be one more tank wide, so instead of nine, you're going to have 12. You're going to have four, 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 all 10-gallon tanks, mainly used for breeding and growing out fry. You can see I already have the water lines plumbed in, ready to go. Uh, why don't we show you how that works real quick? So basically... Right now, I can manually fill a tank with this setup here. This valve, by the way, does not constrict flow at all. If you're looking for a good valve to replace your Python one that probably broke, I can leave a link in the bottom of this video if you're interested in that. Anyway, that's attached to one pump in there. There's another pump in there that is going to eventually go on a smart timer. But basically, I could plug this in. It's gonna send water up this pipe and so all of those tanks are gonna get fresh water right now. So if I come over here, every one of these tanks is getting fresh water. See that? Fresh water in, dirty water out. Obviously, you're gonna lose some of your fresh water but you're diluting that. And I gotta say, this is the whole reason. There was, there's two major reasons I built this room. One reason was I'm sick of using plug-in heaters and I'm sick of having a crazy electric bill. So I wanna just heat a space and not have to worry about heaters anymore. Two, I'm sick of doing water changes. It, it's, you know, I've got two young kids, a full-time job, a wife I would like to see once in a while. <laughs> and, uh, it is beginning to be a little too much for me. So this is going to allow me to still enjoy my hobby with uh, minimal, you know, time. I can adjust this. Looks like I got it pretty much open, wide open. So you should be able to see. You see that water coming in? They love their fresh water. And just, I've only had this system up for about a uh, couple weeks now. And already I've noticed a huge, huge change in how fast my fry are growing. When you can give a water change every day, 
you're gonna notice really, really fast growth. I'll show you what's all in these nine tanks right here. First tank is a batch of Philippine blue angelfish. A lot of people have been asking me about these. And this is my second batch I got going. The first batch is much bigger. I don't remember how old they are, but they've been growing really fast with this uh, new system. See the tank's still a little bit blue from the methylene blue I used. Uh, I've done like three 90% water changes on it, so it just takes a while for that to dissipate. I have another mop of Rosario Lacourt Bosmani growing up in here. You know, in a year from now, <laughs> these will be really beautiful fish. But until then, we get to enjoy watching them grow up. One tank over from the Bosmani is a, another tank of Kelly Tawa. I've been getting a lot more eggs from these guys lately. I oh, mean, I was giving them tons of bloodworms, brine shrimp, and rapashi, and their egg production just went through the roof. But I've got quite a few Kelly Tawas growing up. As soon as this video posts, there'll be some on my website as well. The next tank looks like we got some Chilothrena alani. These are the Wapoga red variety. And to the right of that are some Kelly Moisey, my favorite rainbows. It's kind of interesting. You can see there's a pretty big color difference. These look more like a rusty orange color, and these look more whitish blue. You see that there's a pretty big contrast. I just noticed that. That's interesting. So this bottom rack is all dedicated to breeding these raccoon tetras. And this bottom 10 gallon, I've just got a breeding group of raccoon tetras in here over a dish with some mesh on top of the dish. If you've gone back far enough in my videos, you can see that this is how I breed CPDs. Uh, if I'm not using the automatic egg catching system. Basically there's some media on the top. It could be moss, it could be a, a, you know, a breeding mop, doesn't matter. The fish will hover above that media, deposit eggs, and the eggs will fall into this tray through the mesh. This avoids having these fit hungry fish just eat their eggs immediately after they spawn. So I'm just getting into breeding tetras. I've bred uh, cardinal tetra, I've bred ember tetras, and now I'm breeding these raccoon tetras. I've bred them before, <laughs> not, not trying to, they just did it themselves, uh, honestly. But, and actually, this next tank has three or four babies in here. And then in this tank, I've just been throwing the eggs in. So basically every night, I pull this out and I check for eggs and whether or not I see eggs, I just dump it in here anyway. Hopefully I will start seeing a bunch of fry in here soon. I've already seen some fry. I mean, you really have to look, but they're on the glass. I'm actually gonna pull this out and see if we got any eggs. Uh, these guys don't seem very scared of me at all, which is kind of funny. So basically I take this moss out and I just shake it off in this tank in case there's any eggs that um, maybe are stuck in the moss. Sometimes if you shine a light right underneath the moss, you can see some eggs falling out of it. Then I stick my hand in here and I grab my little breeding apparatus. Drain a little bit of water out. It's a little tricky with one hand, but I think I can manage. Open it up. And we check for eggs. So I just take my flashlight and I shine on the side here. And that gives me a pretty good idea if I got eggs. They should be at the bottom. I wasn't really expecting anything, but I take this water anyway, just because I can't trust my eyes. And just dump it in there. Whoop. City's relaxing chair for when she's down here and she needs a break. She's a very hard worker, but she needs a break once in a while. This swanky little adjustable seat. I think Dean told me to get this. He commented on one of my videos uh, about his fry system. And uh, he said, you know, the only thing you're missing is an adjustable seat where you can spin. For my birthday, Jordan got me this really awesome utility cart on Amazon. It's actually really cheap. And guys, this is not sponsored or anything, but for how cheap this thing is, it's, man, is it, it's high quality. If you're looking for a cart for your garage or something, this one's pretty decent. Right now you can see it's just collecting junk. It's not gonna always look like this. Like I said, this is a 225 vertical container. I got um, Facebook Marketplace, I think for like 150 bucks. So I was really happy with that price. I was gonna do IBC tote, but that takes up a lot more floor space and I wanna use every inch I have of this room. So if you can imagine, there's gonna be a black metal rack in the other room, fits perfectly against this wall. 
and uh, it's going to be all 20 gallon highs, I think, at this point. Right now it's 20 gallon high, 20 gallon high, 10 gallons. But if I've got the extra room, I might as well do 20 gallon highs because I feel like it's a little more of a flexible tank. Um, it's just easier to work with because you can raise a fish and sell a fish out of a 20 high. Uh, it's a little harder to do with a 10 gallon tank. You know, that the smaller the tank, I feel like the more you just have to move the fish. So let me turn the lights back off and we'll see what's popping in this rack. This, this rack is super tall. It goes almost all the way up to the ceiling. So this top section is actually kind of hard to feed and it's only going to be used for breeding fish. Um, because you think about it, a breeding tank, you don't have to get up there as much. A fry tank, you really want to take good care of the, um, the bottom. You want to be siphoning that out pretty much every day. Breeders are easier because you're literally, you've got them in there for the specific purpose of breeding them. You don't need to really intervene with it. See these guys right here. And it's kind of cool viewing them from this angle too. It's a unique angle. All the way to our left are the breeding group of Kalitawa rainbow fish. I'm going to be giving away eggs to six people. I'll send them to your door for free and you can hatch them out yourself. Next video I'm going to make is going to be about how to breed rainbow fish. So I'll explain exactly how you can hatch those eggs out so that you can have these beautiful fish too. I think they're going to look way better under better lighting. These are the, my new rice fish. I started breeding them. I got some eggs and I've already got some fry. So that's exciting. This tank has my Melotania lacustris. It's the turquoise rainbow fish. They're just starting to reach breeding size. So I've got them in here to start really power feeding them, growing them out. They're probably not going to look very good in this tank just because the lighting's not very good on it and there's no plants. But these guys are already very blue actually. And I have seen some eggs in the mop, although I haven't pulled it yet. I don't know why. Should probably get on that. I've got my breeder pair of Philippine blue angelfish. Give me two successful spawns in this uh, room so far already. I don't know if I should keep breeding them. I feel like I'm kind of, I don't want to max out on space just yet. So I put those guys back in a display tank or something like that. Down here, I've got my uh, Furcata pseudomagills, the blue eyes, as well as my Trilineatus Coris. Big Mama's back there. Next, we have a tank of my Kelly Tawa juveniles I'll be selling. Uh, the moment this video posts, I'll be putting them in stock on the website. So if you want some nice Kelly Tawas, go ahead and put an order in and I'll probably send you a couple extra too. I usually, if, if something's not on sale, just so you guys know, I, I try to send extras every single time. So if you order six fish, you're probably going to get more like eight or nine. Next tank has my Chilithrina Alani Wapoga Red variety. These Alani are actually going to be going on sale too. The moment this video posts, you may have seen some of these in a um, recent video featuring Gary Lang's fish room. They are phenomenal looking. I actually don't have any adults in a planted tank right now. Shame on me. I should de definitely do that. These guys are a little freaked out. I just cleaned the glass and I scared them. But I um, already have a few really colored up males in there. Next we have the Kelly Moisey Juveniles. You can see there's one with a swim, bla uh, swim bladder issue I got to take care of. But these guys aren't quite big enough to sell yet. Once I get this rack set up to the automatic water change system, I think you're going to see a dramatic increase in um, the, the growth rate of these fish. These blueberry tetras are donated from my friend David. Thank you, David, so much. I love them. They're, they look like they're definitely ready to breed. I've got to get on that and start trying to breed them. Then I have my Venezuelan Corridors in here. I have not really actively tried to breed them. Once I get more 10 gallon tank set up, I'm going to take a crack at it. This 20 gallon has a bunch of Philippine blue angelfish growing out. This next tank has way too many CPDs. Absolute massive amount. This is all thanks to the automatic egg catching system. It makes this too easy, to be honest with you. You can kind of forget about it. As long as you're feeding every day, you get more and more fish. So I might have to put a big school of these in a tank somewhere. I think that would look really cool because there's way too many fish in this tank right now. Next are the Melitania Parva. These are already starting to show some really good color, especially in the morning. They really, really light up. 
These are the Gary Lang strain. This is my breeding group of L and I Wapoga Red. And what's really cool about these guys, look at this. I don't know if you can see that. I got more fry in this tank. Yep. These guys are extremely prolific and um, they don't really eat their fry up there. They let their fry swim around. Yeah, look how many fry are up there. These guys deserve a better light and a better tank. I, I really want to see them in a planted tank. This last tank on this rack has about 50 L181 baby plecos in here. They just started free swimming like a couple days ago. So they are tiny. So I just make sure to do 50% water change on this tank every single day. I wish it was on the automatic water change system, but it's not. So until I do that, it's 50% water changes every day, feeding twice a day. Uh, just lots of rapashi and uh, algae wafers. Start giving them some veggies too. But I got about 50 in here. Plecos are such a joy to breed. I love breeding these guys. And I uh, stole one of my wife's Monstera plants. I don't know if this is the smaller variety, but I'm going to see how it does growing out of the tank. I think it should do pretty well. I want to really start growing plants out of all my tanks. So I've got different forms of pathos. I've got wandering dude there that seems to be doing pretty well. I've got a spider plant I want to get going again. Like there. Or Monstera. So already this stuff's starting to take off. See, that's a really cool version of pothos. So next to this rack is the 75 gallon double rack right here. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way that these Aquion 75s are sometimes built with tempered glass on the side panes. I tried drilling one and I broke it. I drilled over 20 tanks, didn't break a single one. And they break the biggest one I own, so that really sucks. You know, I look up to the window and Sydney and George were just shaking their head watching. So that was, it was just a bad situation. Luckily, they sell these overflow boxes that I think are going to save the day here. So here's an overflow box. I don't have to drill through these tanks anymore. I guess during COVID, they had glass shortages and stuff like that. And Aquion just started using different panes of glass on every tank. So like... If they had a tempered piece that would fit the side, even though they usually just do the bottoms, they start putting them on the sides too. And they don't really tell you which one's tempered. I know there's a trick you can do to like see. Uh, I didn't even think to do that. So anyway, this overflow box will be plumbed into that drain. So and actually down here, I have some rice fish eggs that I've been picking every day. They're already starting to eye out. Actually, quite a bit of eggs in there. So that's cool. I really got to get um, Dean's fry system built right here. Because uh, I, I love hatching eggs out in it, actually. I use it as a hatcher and like early start for fry. So yeah, guys, that's the fish room so far. I'm honestly super, super happy with this room. It's like a dream come true, honestly. I can just see it all come to life now. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to afford this. So... I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing and also ordering fish from the website, sydneysangels.com. It really means a lot to me. I would not be able to do this without your support. I really feel like something special is happening in this room. It really, it really feels like exactly what I was dreaming of. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate that. All right, if you stuck around this long and you want to know how you can win those Katawa eggs, just Type the word Tawa, T-A-W-A, in the comments below. And also leave your personal email. Uh, YouTube's not the best with the notifications, I've noticed. And I'm going to pick six winners from the comment section. If I can't reach you and you won, I'm just going to go to the next you know, winner. Um, if you live in a different country other than the U.S. and you want these eggs, just look up the rules and regulations for that kind of thing and send it to me within a month of winning. And... Um, we can make it happen. I'll, I'll pay for it and I'll ship it to you. Thank you everyone for checking out the fish room and I'm looking forward to making a lot more content very soon. Thank you so much. Bye.